Hi everyone, state provision is the direct provision of goods and services by the government free at the point of consumption. You can see from this definition just how extreme state provision is as a policy to solve market failure because the government is taking over the market completely, allocating all resources towards a given good or service, but they're also providing that good or service free at the point of consumption. So very extreme and in that sense you've got to be careful when you decide to use this as a policy to solve market failure. Yes, you can talk about solving merit good market failure with state provision, but be careful. We know with merit goods they are under-consumed, under-produced, and yes, state provision in theory can fix that, given that the government will account for all externalities that are more likely to hit the social optimum, and so we can solve that kind of an issue. But there's got to be more than just under-consumption, under-production taking place. Otherwise, you'll start talking about state provision of gyms or state provision of healthy foods, and that sounds a little bit over the top with state provision. So more than just this issue, you would also need to argue that left to the free market, there is inequity when it comes to key merit goods in the sense, inequity he means unfairness, in the sense that a price is being charged for that merit good, where you would argue that maybe no price should be charged to exclude consumers from that market. So what kind of merit goods are we talking about? Clearly, we're talking about healthcare education. We know there is underconsumption, underproduction of these left of the free market, but certainly on the grounds of morality, on the grounds of fairness, equity, we could argue that maybe nobody should be excluded from accessing health or education, in which case, yes, you can bring in state provision as a viable policy to solve that market failure. Of course, we can talk about state provision to solve public goods market failure. Again, left to the free market, we know that there wouldn't be a market for public goods. There'll be no provision in the free market. There'll be a missing market given the free rider problem. So state provision, in theory, is a way to completely fix that issue. So how does state provision work? Well, let's understand linking to the market for healthcare. How does state provision start? Well, we make a lot of assumptions about what the government knows. We assume that the government knows the full social cost and the social benefit, meaning they know all the externalities present, they can value them all perfectly, and thus they know what the socially optimum level of output is. If we talk about healthcare in the UK, we have state-provided healthcare, the NHS. We also have state-provided education, state schools. And in the UK every year, the government has a set budget towards the NHS, towards education. So when we draw the supply curve in a market with state provision, we draw it vertical. Perfectly price inelastic because simply there is a fixed amount of resources allocated to this market every year. Given that budget, can't increase, can't decrease, it's fixed. So that's why we draw the curve vertical. And as we've said, we assume that to be at Q star. The demand curve is just normal downward sloping. Now the mistake here would be to take the price from equilibrium. That is a mistake because we know with state provision the government will provide this good or service free at the point of consumption. There is universal access for all consumers into this market and that is because the price is zero. So you've got to make sure you add that on. The price is nothing. There is universal access to this market free at the point of consumption provision. In that sense, put these two together. We can solve the underconsumption, underproduction of merit goods, yes, but also we solve the inequity issues given that there is universal access. We can also solve any missing market public good issues. And in that sense, we can reach the socially optimum level. We get allocative efficiency and maximum welfare. That's how state provision works in theory. A lot of assumptions, a lot of theory there. Let's now look at some of the major issues, and there are lots when it comes to state provision. Well, certainly the biggest issue with state provision is the excess demand it creates, and this always occurs whenever the price is zero, whenever something is provided free at the point of consumption. And on our diagram, it's very clear that when the price is zero, quantity demand that is way over there, quantity supplied is only at Q star. The difference between those two quantities is the excess demand. Now, left to the free market, this wouldn't be a long run issue because prices would rise to ration this excess demand. But of course, that can't happen with state provision. The whole point is that there is universal access to the market. The price remains at zero. So how does the government ration the excess demand? There is no perfect solution. Maybe in the healthcare market, um, it's based on severity of condition. So depending on how serious your health condition is, that will determine when you get treatment. That's certainly not a perfect solution. It's someone's opinion. It's normative. But also you have lots of people who have to live in pain if their condition is not considered serious enough to get immediate attention. 
not an efficient solution at all there. Maybe it's a lottery draw, literally names are taken out of a hat to decide on treatment. Well, we don't have that for healthcare, that would be ridiculous, but we do have that for education. The schools that kids can go to in the UK depends on the postcode that you have, depends on the catchment area that you live in, that will determine the school that you can go to. That's not an efficient solution either. Or maybe the government just steps back and says, hey, deal with the excess demand, with big queues, with large waiting lists, Accept that in your class there'll be lots of kids there, maybe 30, 40 kids in a class. Accept that maybe some of your treatment might be a little bit rushed, might not be of the highest quality because of the burdens the excess demand creates. Well, of course, that's not a good solution either. So we can say that, yeah, consumers don't pay a price, price is zero, but they pay in other ways. They pay in pain or they pay with poor quality um, provision in schools, poor quality treatment when it comes to healthcare. They pay in other ways. In that sense, maybe you can argue that there is a role for the private sector here. If there was a, a functioning private sector, those can afford it, might go to the private sector instead and alleviate some of the pressure on state-provided goods and services. That's something that you can consider and something you can debate depending on what the market is. At the same time, we can worry about just how expensive state provision is. Bear in mind the government has taken over the entire market. Huge sums of money going into state provision, taxpayers' money. So you can worry about long run funding, higher taxes, cuts to other areas of government spending in the economy, debt interest that needs to be paid, and general opportunity cost arguments are very valid here. At the same time, governments do not have perfect information. We assume that they know social benefits, social costs, they can value all externalities, that they know the socially optimum level of output. Of course they don't. So in reality, chances are quantity is not gonna be at Q-star, could be higher, in which case pure government failure arguments come in if they're overdoing the allocation of resources here, or it could be lower, worsening the excess demand. Government failure risks both ways. And also state-run organizations tend to be highly inefficient because they lack a profit motive. So costs tend to be much higher. You can start worrying about whether this is really the most effective use of public money, especially when a lot of it is being wasted with higher costs. Huge opportunity costs there big risks of government failure as a result. So that guys covers everything you need to know for state provision. This is a highly interesting policy and one that you need to debate very strongly depending on the market you're trying to argue it for. So hopefully this video gives you exactly what you need, the detail that you need to debate and to discuss. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you all in the next video.